Hi, everybody. My name is Kate McLean, and I lead the product and content marketing team for the Cisco Cloud Security Group. The primary service or solution that our team covers is Cisco Umbrella. And for years, Umbrella has been a leading provider of cloud-delivered security solutions, helping businesses of all sizes across all industries connect to the internet with confidence from any device. Now, during today's session, we'll hear from leading data scientist Austin McBride, and global small business security leader, Randy Silver, on the threats that small businesses face today and how our customers are winning this war against these threats. Now, before I turn it over to the speakers for their intros, let's cover just a few housekeeping items. So you are in listen-only mode for the duration of the event today, uh, but we wanna hear from you for sure. So make sure that you're asking any of your burning questions um, using the, the digital platform that you're on. So comments fields, or if you're on Twitter, using hashtag Cisco chat. Now I've got a handful of Q&A prepared, but hoping that we have time at the end, we will absolutely open it to audience questions live. Okay, introductions. Austin, uh, can you uh, share with us your fast four? So who you are, your role at Cisco, your favorite quarantine activity, and what you plan to share with us today. Sure. In order for this to work, it has to be optimized for 5G. We'll design it from scratch. Fully automated. Fully virtualized. Cloud. Core. Transport. Virtual RAN. Everything. everything. It will be the first of its kind. Oh, yeah. You can figure it out. We can figure it out. This is their idea. It's an ambitious idea. An unprecedented idea. It's true. But this is what industry executives called it. Impossible. 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 But that didn't stop them. That just made them hungry. So Prakash, how about developers? We'll create a platform. Different systems. Different partners working, working together. together. What else? This is the plane that took the Rakuten team to San Jose. Okay, so it takes three weeks to implement a traditional radio site. With automation, we can do it in 10 minutes and more secure. Zero touch. Zero defect. Ready for 5G. Just upgrade the software. This is Tarek's impressed face. This went on for months. We're going to need new hardware. Then we'll partner with your vendor. But our design? You got it. Then Tarek said. And we want you to manage the whole chain, oversee the integration of vendors and partners. We're on it. February 3rd, 2019. This is Rakuten and Cisco and their impossible idea making their first call. Oh my God. And the world just changed. Rakuten and Cisco customer experience. The right solutions, the right technology. Most importantly, the right people. Between ideas and invention, there's a bridge. Cisco, the bridge to possible. My name's Ami Tank. I've been at Cisco for 20 years. Grace Girls Home is a girls' orphanage in Sri Lanka. We have over 40 girls right now. They come from really difficult backgrounds tremendous circumstances, yet they have resilience, you know, they've got passion, and they want to grow up to help others. We provide them with housing, care, food, nutrition, doctors, mental health care, dental visits, and all of that. I am the chief of staff, and I manage the board. There's so many ways that technology can be used to end poverty, to help these girls. One is through online education, but we need a way to track it, to manage it, to work with the girls, and to continually kind of improve on it. When you allow a girl to stand on her own two feet, either through education, opportunity, exposure, whatever, you can raise a community. My mom, who has just recently passed away, she lived and grew up in pure poverty. She always persevered. Before she passed away, she said, You've got to continue to give in life because that's the purpose of life. That to me is really what inspires me. One girl said to me, promise me when you leave here, you'll be my voice. And I told her, I said, when I leave here, I'm going to tell everybody about you. Between Sri Lanka's lost girls and a future full of opportunity, there's a me tank.
growing up, I always wanted to be helpful. I was inspired by my mother and how she helped my community. My mom would cook a lot of Syrian food. One day, she asked my brother and me to deliver meals to our neighbors in need. She taught me that when you help others, anything is possible. Even leaving my country to pursue a degree. When I landed, I was shocked to see the level of poverty. I thought, how could such a wealthy country waste so much food when so many people are worried about their next meal? I heard my mother in my ear, and I knew what I needed to do. I started taking surplus food that would otherwise be thrown away and giving it to those who would benefit from it. I could see the tremendous impact. YouTube or you know, podcasts and in the background or, or go to pages and read news and things like that and relating to the pandemic that you wouldn't have otherwise normally done uh, on a work machine and so malicious actors have figured out that it's very easy to set up you know, phishing sites or dropper sites that are uh, you know purporting to give you information about where to get the vaccine or where to get free testing um, and then they ask you to log into your outlook or something like that uh, and then that's a, a way for them to get into your environment with sharing cisco's purpose to power an inclusive future we've been able to provide over two million meals across the U.S. My mother is my real hero. She taught me that a delivery so small could one day deliver on something so much bigger. Between a small gesture and a huge impact, there's a bridge. My name's Roy Vessel. I've been at Cisco for 12 years. Outside of Cisco, I work in teaching cybersecurity and cyber defense to youth through a program called Cyber Patriot and through the United States Air Force Civil Air Patrol. I took the team over and fell in love with it. We start at the age of 12, work all the way through high school. I want them to know how to take care of themselves and protect their information, protect themselves, protect their families. We've got kids that have graduated through my program that are now working for the government. I've got folks that are working in corporations looking for cyber threats and how do we prevent them. Cisco's been heavily involved. If you have something that you have on your heart um, or passion that you want to reach out and do, talk to your manager. The satisfaction of seeing uh, these kids grow, uh, seeing those light bulbs go off, that's my payment. Between curious kids and the future of cybersecurity, there's Roy Vestal. Greatness accepts no lag, no delay, no excuses. It lives in the tiny space between milliseconds and nanoseconds. Between we're cautious of seeing these types of uh, instances in our, in our environment where we're getting compromised and that there also will be follow-up malware. And that leads into the, the second trend, that we're seeing a lot more orchestrated, multi-staged, uh, evasive attacks um, to where you're not just getting infected with one individual compromise. It's, it's multiple and it can be staged out over hours, days, uh, or weeks. So you need to be a lot more cautious than you would have been in the past. And it's not just a single uh, incident. It's a, a multitude of instances that happen over time. Uh, the third trend that uh, I think is really important for everybody is that crypto mining is opening the door for other types of uh, cyber attacks. Uh, so with, with crypto mining, what you need to worry about is that uh, there are two different flavors, essentially. One is web-based, where you're on a you know, website and it's mining in the background where you're visiting it. But as soon as you close the page, um, it's done and it no longer uses your machine to mine. Uh, and then the second case is uh, software-based mining. Um, so this is where either one of your employees installs mining software on a corporate machine and uses it to make uh, you know side money uh, you know while they do the normal work or it's a malicious third party that has somehow found their way into your environment uh, set up a, a crypto mining uh, software to basically make passive income while they look through your system for data to exfiltrate or uh, to hold you for ransom so crypto mining is something that you need to be aware of and generally you want to look for uh, 1,000 to 1,500 queries from a uh, server or individual machine in a given day or a couple of days in order to determine if you've got a software-based miner, which would mean you would need to look a little bit closer into that. Uh, and then the fourth trend, which we covered a little bit before, 
is an attacker is really taking advantage of these uh, pandemic related um, you know, websites setting up uh, things for you to go check on whether you can sign up for a vaccine uh, or you know, go look to where there's a local free testing. So you definitely need to be cognizant of looking at pandemic related um, content, especially on your work machine. Awesome. So thank you for sharing, you know, hugely helpful insights on these growing trends. I do have to ask, um, you know, how do you know this? Of course, I trust you. Um, but, you know, do you want to share with our audience here um, how you have visibility, uh, how you use the umbrella global cloud architecture uh, to help see these threat trends um, globally? Absolutely. Uh, so what we do, or what I do on my end, is I, I take anonymized uh, customer demographic information. So this is things like geography, um, company size, as well as industry. And I pair that with the uh, DNS query logs that we, we process for all of our customers and, and users. And so by pairing all of that together, uh, I'm able to see if a specific threat or attack is trending in a given geography or um, uh, company size segment. So whether it's small businesses, medium or large, or if uh, you know Trojans are predominantly impacting you know healthcare or anything like that. So uh, this is how we we look at the data and we're able to determine what is trending overall as well as what is trending for specific verticals. Awesome. And one last question I do want to ask before we had hand it over to um, Randy for some questions. Uh, crypto mining. So we've talked about this one several times, and especially important for small businesses. Um, why do you think that it continues to be you know such a, a growing trend, continues to soar, continues to light up the internet. What is it about crypto mining? Well, the thing about crypto mining is, is that, uh, well, you know, it costs, it costs money, right, to, in order to mine, uh, you know, Bitcoin or any other type of uh, cryptocurrency. And generally, the malicious third party is using your hardware, your internet, uh, your bandwidth uh, and everything to, to mine, and they don't really care about whether it's cost effective or not for, uh, for you. But uh, especially with now that you know Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are, are soaring, I think Bitcoin some somewhere around you know thirty six uh, hundred at the moment. Uh, mining is immensely profitable at the moment, so you're going to see a lot more uh, software uh, mining in your environments now than you would have before because it's so much more valuable than it was in the past. And so this is going to continue to be the trend uh, for the rest of 2021. Uh, and as crypto mining uh, you know increases in value. Uh, you're going to see a lot of additional compromises related to that. Awesome. And I do want to pause and just remind audience, Austin is sharing a lot of great information and just in the, in the time we have scratching the surface here, if there are, you know, burning questions you have as it relates to threat trends, make sure that you're asking them using the comments field, using hashtag Cisco chat and Twitter, and we're going to get to them at the end to make sure you're you're getting your questions in. Okay, so Randy, turning it over to you, is this what you're hearing too when you're talking to small businesses? The you know, um, cyber attack growth, massive amount of threats. Um, you know, what what are you hearing from the organizations you're talking to? Yeah, and honestly, I just want to second what you said, Kate. That information from Austin is so valuable. It's stuff that you probably have to pay a bunch of money for. It. Austin's giving out free, so it's really important for you guys to understand those vectors and how you can protect yourself because that's what we're seeing in small business. As you see on your screen, small businesses are hit by sixty two percent of cyber attacks. But when we speak to cyber, excuse me, when we speak to small businesses, they think because they're so small that they're probably not getting attacked by cyber criminals. But actually, it's the reverse thought because big companies have such a robust security system that it's harder to break into those most of the time. So they want to go after the easier threats, which would be small businesses that don't have that whole security landscape built out. Maybe you don't have the funds to do it. You're not that big. You don't think you need it. And then the, the chain reaction is, because of the supply chain of the attacks of hitting the small ones, they can then move up and get into those bigger companies. So they actually probably start with small businesses first and then move forward. And why is that hitting you? It's because your business faces so many fronts and threats. You have users, devices, applications are more vulnerable, especially if your small business has had to go remotely and it's always been at an office on network. Maybe you don't have that security set up, which is why you're seeing, as Austin said, more phishing attacks, more malware happening because now they're more vulnerable. So it's very, very, very critical that your organization detects these threats more quickly because, again, you don't have that robust system. Maybe you don't have the cash flow. You don't have the money as a big business. And if you guys get hit, your information gets leaked. They, they take your passwords. Uh, brand awareness gets hit because they see you got cyber attacked. It could be the end of the small business. So it's very, very important to make sure that your business is um, protected. 
Awesome. So I know we've highlighted some of those challenges facing small businesses, obviously threats. Um, you know, we're all here because uh, we're concerned about security and protecting our users, our data, um, you know, resource limitations. But Rainy, you want to talk a little bit more about, you know, other challenges um, and concerns that that folks are raising as, as you're speaking to folks that work uh, in small organizations? Yeah. So what I would say is the four things you see on your screen, they're really important. Most people don't know where the attack has started. You guys don't have the visibility to see what did it come from an email? Did it come from some taking a password? Did someone go to a bad website and they got ransomware downloaded on their computer? So the basic question is, how did I get attacked and where did it start? Once you can figure that out, then you can reverse do it, as Austin said, and you'll be able to see who was hit, when they were hit, how they were hit. So it's really, really key to be able to see that. And that goes to point two, which is, where's your gaps in visibility and coverage? As I just mentioned as well, are your users now all working remotely? Are they traveling normally? Are they on network? If you are hit, you know, where did they get hit? Did it come from my corporate network? Did it come from people roaming? So getting that visibility and getting that holistic view is very, very important to protecting you and your assets. There are too many vendors out there, which is a common thing to say as well, which is why here at Cisco Security, we try to make it easy for you. We have a whole security suite of solutions across the board that can protect your endpoint, your network, your firewalls, your cloud apps, everything like that. And we get it. When you have to go to six different vendors for six different products, it makes it very messy. Who do I speak to? Where do I start when something happens in my uh, incident report? I have no idea where to go. And that's where we tie it all together with SecureX, which you guys may have heard about. It's our one-stop shop platform that actually integrates as well with third-party tools, not just Cisco security, because we care about you and your security. So even if you're not using us, if it's just one product and you have other security solutions, we want you to be able to correlate all that data together so quickly. So with the SecureX platform, you can see where an incident happened, all your different tools correlating together, and it gives you the visibility to know where you need to start and how you can protect yourself based off of the information that you're seeing. Now, we haven't talked too much yet um, about SaaS and the reliance on SaaS, um, Randy, but is this another challenge? Like, is this something else that you hear from small businesses keeping them up at night? Uh, the use of apps, maybe shadow IT, um, you know, we've talked about users being dispersed, working everywhere. How about, you know, where their apps reside or where their data actually resides is, is this stuff you hear about as well? Yes, yes, that's a good point, especially with the whole remote work going on. The fact that, you know, people usually are behind that corporate network, so you can put everything directly up into the cloud if you go there or you have it on your proxies. So it's very, very protected at the corporate network. Now, as people work remotely, maybe you're using the SaaS products such as Google Suite, Microsoft Office 365, other SaaS tools to make your business better in the cloud. How are you protecting those? Because if they're not giving you security on those specific tools, then they're very, very vulnerable. And that's where Cisco Security has cloud application tools for your SaaS needs to make sure we're protecting all those assets in the cloud. So that way you don't have to worry about someone going into, say, your Dropbox, getting your private information. You know, one thing that we like to talk about, Kate, is we were having a client, very, very big client, and they had 16 years of tax returns up in the cloud. Think about that. Someone had 16 years of tax returns in the cloud. That just gives me stress thinking about it. But without Cisco Security, they never would have seen that. And they were able to, one, obviously take those out of the cloud, and two, protect their holistic security altogether to ensure that other important information, business or personal, wasn't in the cloud to um, not get hacked or get cybersecurity issues. Yeah, so I think, you know, reliance on SaaS has definitely, definitely seemed to increase with people working remotely, yes. but it's not a new thing. Like you said, folks have been using cloud and, and cloud apps and storage for a long time. And it, it again, heightens, I guess, the, the gaps. And we have a pop-up over Curator. There was information from Cisco products like advanced malware protection, global intelligence, also virus total was set up in the demo. You'll see X-Force exchange. And then when you're inside of that, that for a response and you're looking at the context and the right click, you have the ability to take action, including that pivot, like you shared. Here's where you can learn more about it. You can see all of the integrations that we have with SecureX by going to cs.co, that's Cisco for short, for response integrations. Also, all of the, excuse me, IBM security products that Chris has talked about and more at ibm.com security. And then they actually have a place on our website 
cs.co that's cisco black ibm and you can see more about q radar and what the different products that they integrate with across our portfolio so let's go see the demo with ian thank you chris hello and welcome to the cisco securex and ibm integration demo for cisco securex i am ian redden the manager of ecosystems development at cisco i'd like to talk to you today about brian Brian is a SOC analyst at a small financial services company in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Today's demonstration follows what it's like to use both Cisco SecureX and IBM Q Radar in a security operations center. Without further ado, let's get started. Brian starts his day with a quick meeting with the SOC manager. Every day he receives the same question, how secure are we? Unlike other analysts in Brian's industry, he's never been worried about this question as he's powered with both Cisco SecureX and IBM Q Radar. Brian's SecureX dashboard contains everything he needs to know to efficiently secure his organization. In addition to integrations with his Cisco products, the integration modules have been set up for all the product products that Brian owns in his organization. Additionally, from available integration modules listing, Brian has considered other security products to add to his arsenal of tools. And he's really eyeing a Cisco umbrella subscription and virus toll. Brian usually starts his day the same way by opening his QRadar console. Very quickly, Brian notices something very strange. COVID19YouTube.com. Hmm. 55% of cyber squatted domains today are usually malicious or potentially fraudulent. As this domain resembles YouTube.com, a popular video sharing website, Brian decides to investigate further. We're going to hover over the destination IP address. Cisco SecureX is built on Cisco's threat intelligence model, CTIM for short. Judgments are the intent or nature of an observable. For example, is it malicious, clean, suspicious, common, or simply unknown? Verdict is the top judgment of the judgments. And citing is when an indicator has been seen. Indicator is evidence to support a judgment and what defines activity or presence of malware. In this case, with Cisco SecureX verdicts, we have Cisco AMP Global Intelligence, IBM X Force, Force Exchange, both telling us a, disposi uh, a disposition of something we need to look at. It's either malicious or suspicious. And Cisco Umbrella is giving us a disposition of unknown. So based on this information, Brian decides to investigate further. So to investigate further, it's, it's even simpler. You simply right click on the destination IP that we were just looking at, hover over more options, and then investigate in Cisco SecureX threat response. Cisco SecureX and Cisco threat response is at its core an integration and aggregation platform for multiple security products in your organization. We kind of started this whole cloud revolution with Cisco. And with Cisco Umbrella, the best part, as I talked about earlier, you'll get visibility across all your users 24 seven, nonstop on and off network. So it really will be a great stop, excuse me, starting point. With Cisco Duo, if you haven't heard of Duo before, it's a two factor authentication tool. So if I try to log into an internal website, I have to get a ping to my phone, I click the ping on my phone that says it'll let me in, it'll let me go to that. That way that internal assets does very important information. Someone can't just take someone's computer, boom, log in. It makes it so that it's very, very secure. You need that second factor authentication. Cisco Duo is really important. It's growing. You can see that there's a lot of other type of companies out there doing the same thing. I'm sure you guys have other types of assets, you know, maybe use other tools such as a Robinhood for stocks or other types of apps where you have to use a face identification for your phone. 
same concept. So Cisco Duo gives you that protection of knowing there's a second step and someone just taking your passwords. And then to finish up, as I talked about, we have SecureX, but I would like to talk about our newest product here, Cisco Cloud Mailbox Defense. This just came out in the past six months. It's there to protect your Office 365 emails. It's again, as we are all moving to the cloud, there are some email solutions out there, but this is a cloud mailbox solution. You don't have to worry about an on-premise solution, a proxy, anything like that. It takes five minutes to trial and set up. It can do, again, it's only for Office 365, but it's the simplest solution I personally ever use for email solutions, and it's out there to protect your users in the cloud. So all that together, using Cisco security, gives you the power of simplicity, it gives you secure access I talked about, and then the icing on the cake is you get Talos. If you haven't heard of Talos before, Talos is Cisco's threat-centric organization. Talos, Talos has two to 300 researchers every day, you know, Austin's included in, in the bench, and their whole job is just looking at the security threats out there, correlating the data, and adding that protection to Cisco. So anything that is using Cisco security, Cisco tools, Cisco products is fed Talos information and it gets that protection. If Talos was a standalone own business organization, you want to call it, it would actually be the biggest threat organization in the world for cybersecurity. And you don't have to worry about it. That's free. It comes with Cisco. Any product you buy, you're going to get the Talos information. It feeds the products. And we're very happy to have that as a backing to let you again know what's the value. Is Cisco has your back for security. So you can focus on all their aspects of your business, knowing that you have Talos, you have every Cisco organization fighting for you. Awesome. So thank you so much, Randy, for that comprehensive view of kind of what Cisco offers, uh, the products we offer, and kind of our, our intelligence that powers all of these solutions as well. So that's the end of our prepared Q&A. Um, so we've got plenty of time for audience Q&A too. So I want to make sure you know, audience, for those folks out there listening, um, virtual audience, ask your questions. We've already received a few. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot some off, but keep them coming um, because we have Randy and Austin here to help us answer any of your burning questions. So please, please send them along. Okay, so Austin, first one from you, for you, I should say. Um, Alice from Cisco.com um, wants to understand, can you explain what you mean again by a multi-staged attack? Maybe provide an example of exactly what what that looks like. Sounds complicated, sounds huge, big trend to look out for. So can you explain a bit more about that? Sure, um, so a, a great example of a multi-stage attack would be um, you would get uh, an email from um, what you would think would be someone internally in your business. Uh, it has a, a link that you click on because you think you're going to access an individual document, uh, and that link ends up being a, a phishing link, a Emotet phishing link. So you would click on it um, and then you might get uh, something dropped onto your machine. So a multi-stage attack is where it's not about just going after your credentials, uh, it's about doing multiple things. So once you've clicked on the link and they drop a piece of malware, let's say ransomware onto your machine, um, you're infected with ransomware, but it might not immediately lock up your machine. Uh, once they're in your environment, they're gonna peruse around, see what type of security patches you have, uh, and see if there's anything else they can do with your machine besides just hold you for ransom because they want as many options to uh, essentially you know make money and hold you for ransom or uh, exfiltrate data from your business uh, as possible so you might initially uh, get you know ransomware dropped but it won't kick in for uh, a day or two while they look for maybe data to exfiltrate or if they can turn your machine into a, a mouse spam bot in order to proliferate uh, the same email that you clicked on with the rest of your organization uh, and that's what we mean by orchestrated uh, multi-stage attacks. It's not just about, oh, I clicked on that link and it's bad, um, but there could be further ramifications uh, of clicking on that link uh, because there could be several different flavors uh, of malware that, that follow up for that, including, as I said, uh, you know, your machine becoming a, a mouse spam bot, uh, your data being exfiltrated, or uh, your machine being locked up for ransom. Awesome. Thanks, Austin, for the explanation on what a multi-stage attack is. Another question here, Austin, for you from Hans on Facebook. Um, are these trends that, that we've talked about today, um, you know, uh, multi-stage attacks, crypto mining and more, are, are, is there someplace to find them? You know, do we have this information on the Talos blog, the Talos site? Where can somebody find information on, on the threat trends that you've described? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, recently, we actually just uh, released a, a cybersecurity report. You can find it on uh, umbrella.cisco.com. Uh, and it details kind of what we've seen change from 2019 to 2020, uh, and then also forward looking into what's happening 
in 2021. And that will talk broadly about the types of uh, threat and attack trends we've seen, uh, not only globally, but also for specific verticals. So let's say if you're in the financial service industry, um, you'd be able to see what your uh, what your industry is predominantly being impacted by now and what we see uh, moving forward. So I would definitely go uh, online and, and look at that asset because there's a lot more information than what I've presented here today. Awesome. Yeah. So as, as, as we mentioned before, with our limited time here, Austin has provided amazing insights, uh, but just scratching the surface. So if I'm not crazy, I think the report is like 20 pages of goodness um, yes. in terms of threat, threat details and information. So definitely, um, you know, go to umbrella.sysco.com and the resources section um, to find that in-depth look at threat trends. Um, another question here. Um, so Austin, you mentioned crypto mining sores. Randy, if I have, you know, let's say umbrella um, as my Cisco solution, or you mm -hmm. know, am I protected from that? Is there anything I need to do to actually enable this protection? The beauty is with Cisco Umbrella, because it's a SaaS and the cloud product, whenever there's some type of need out there or a new emerging threat, we're able to build it very quickly and push it to you guys. There's no hardware you need to worry about. There's no proxy. So when we see threats out there, our customers need, we can build it. So the reason why I say that is, when crypto mining really started becoming a big thing two or three years ago, it was a big customer asked, how do we protect ourselves from crypto mining? We built the feature out within six months, pushed it out. And literally, I'm going to tell you, it takes one step. And I'm not lying to you. It's this easy. You check a button, say crypto mining policy enacted, and you're done. <laughs> it's that easy. And you get the protection world globally, worldwide for your whole company, and you do it. And it's fantastic. Same thing with just umbrella in general. There's every policy you can check box in if you want it, if you don't. And again, the value is, is simple, it's easy, and you can turn it on with the click of the button to make sure that you're protected from all these threats that Austin's talked about. Awesome. That sounds amazingly easy. Um, so, so glad to hear the explanation of how to enable crypto mining protection. Um, another one, Randy, this one's for you. Awesome. Um, how as a small business, can you separate critical incidents from the noise? So how can you focus on the most important stuff first? What's different in terms of Cisco's approach to prioritizing alerts and incidents for our customers? Uh, great question. Thank you for ever submitting that. It's going to go back to the SecureX I talked about. Because with SecureX, it's that one-stop platform that will show you everything inside your systems for Cisco security. And it has that third party integration. So then you'll see all the other security solutions, all your other tools that you're using, one stop shop. No other company in the world can say all this information is correlated on one platform. So when something happens and is pinged to one part of your system, it will come up inside the SecureX platform. And SecureX, SecureX is free once you use one Cisco product and you'll get this visibility. So then you'll know, oh, I need to correlate A to B to C. You can create your tasks so you know what you need to do first, second, and third. If there's a tool that you're missing and you're like, uh-oh, I need this to protect myself or I need this tool to enable my company, right from the SecureX platform, you can click demo or click trial. And it instantly will get you in touch with the person on the Cisco side to get you and kind of, uh, uh, you know, how you uh, manage cybersecurity from an operational standpoint. Yeah, um, great. Great question, Mike. Um, so... Uh, as most of you know, Under Armour is a global company. We, we do not sleep, right? So at the end of the day, uh, some part of Under Armour is always up and running, right? Um, as a global organization, our responsibility is to protect our global assets, our global network, uh, and our global uh, e-commerce environment uh, going forward. So uh, we use uh, uh, as much as we can automation uh, to, to make things easier and better so that we don't spend a lot of time trying to uh, quickly identify and mitigate the threats that we are seeing. Got it. Very cool. And so uh, same question for you, Lachlan. Tell us a little bit about uh, uh, your, your area and how you guys manage cybersecurity. Yeah, as, as most people would know, the Salvation Army is, is a globally recognized and, and trusted brand. Um, we, we have a small cyber security team looking after the Salvation Army here in Australia. We've got about probably 10,000 staff, you know, 30,000 volunteers. We've got probably 2,000 sites. Um, and it's quite a complex uh, environment that we operate because the Salvation Army provides a number of services, you know, 
Um, we provide assistance in disasters such as bushfires and floods, um, homelessness, drug and alcohol addiction, family violence. We've got our retail arm, aged care arm, our employment arm, chaplaincy, and a range of other things that, that we provide to the community. But the really thing that's critically important for the Salvation Army is trust. So all that funding comes from donors and from the government. And it's critically important that we maintain trust in the community because that's what our brand is. People need to trust it. Um, so I see that's what uh, the objective of the cyber security team is, is to maintain and, and enhance that trust in the community. So that's our role. Yeah, for sure. I mean, trust is so important, especially in this industry. Uh, you know, it's uh, so many different things happening. I mean, it's been an unprecedented period of time that we've just, come, you know, come through and, of course, still dealing with it. So, you know, trust is certainly uh, top of the list. So I'm going to ask you both the same question. I think this is a good one. And I'll start with you, Alex. I'll kind of flip back and forth here. But, Alex, um, I, I'd love to know what were what were some of the elements that drew you to SecureX and or uh, uh, what do you what, what do you like best about it? Yeah, so when we when we started looking at, uh, you know, as, as we became global and, 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 and large and uh, running 24 by 7, you know, there wasn't a lot of time to, to quickly identify uh, and respond to threats, right? If we were kind of dealing with the traditional methods of, you know, an alert, combining all of this stuff together, kind of piecing things together and trying to figure it out, it was, it was taking us a long time. So we needed to find a way to quickly get to identifying the threat so we can mitigate the threat very quickly. So that identifying the piece and then making sure that it is a threat and we need to put mitigation for that was taking us time and we needed something to quickly pivot and get to that. Uh, that's where I think uh, SecureX is actually adding value to us, right? So we, we are able to bring together the multiple entry points that we have or bring to bear the multiple uh, threat vectors, if you may, uh, and trying to kind of get it across one single pane of glass. And, and that's such a cliche word that we always try to use and it never happens, but it looks very much like we are trying to put that in place, uh, trying to make sure that we get email and network data, and firewall data, all of that in one spell sweep. Uh, and it, it, it turned out great with uh, 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 Jeff's kind of showing how quickly you could actually bring all of that stuff together in one one screen. So that's the value that we think is is, is SecureX bringing to the table. Yeah, it's, that's fantastic feedback. In fact, we hear from a lot of customers that one of their number one um, you know benefits of SecureX is the is the fact that it does reduce their time to detect, and because of the integrations. Uh, they get they get such a, a a trusted level of evidence right away that they can make decisions. So it's good to hear that you're experiencing the same thing. Fantastic. So Lachlan, same same question to you. Uh, what drew you to SecureX, and uh, you know what do you like best about it? Yeah. So um, I, you know we we've only got a young team at the Salvation Army. Um, you know I, I think the team's been in existence for for just over eighteen months. And in that journey, we've, we've brought on a lot of technology and Cisco has played a big part in that. Um, and the reason we went down the Cisco path was not only did they have good technology in each of the different areas, you know, email, web, endpoint, cloud security, but once what was really clear when we we're evaluating the different players in the industry was once you bring all that technology together, and you start to utilize tools such as SecureX threat response and the orchestration automation, it becomes brilliant technology. Um, and that was really important to us because as I mentioned, we are a small team. The more automation integration and bringing that technology together, the better it is and the easier it is for us. So um, especially this, <clears throat> What we're really finding um, useful and uh, what we're really finding exciting at the moment is the orchestration part of SecureX. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of research now on on what are the third party integrations we can bring into that. Um, yeah, so 
yeah, as I said before, just just bringing bringing all those different technologies together and have them have them playing together nicely is is what really drew us to to Cisco. Yeah, it's it's really you know it's interesting when I think about um, you know not only what customers have told us, which is very similar to both of your responses, but but also you know kind of what the you know the belief system of Cisco is and kind of what we set out to do, which is certainly manifested in both of your responses, and that is. You know, we believe, I mean, I mean, our products are big, right? And there's certainly consoles for everything. And, you know, like you were saying, Alex, you know, kind of the original plan was, you know, you see something and you start putting it together, you got to do it manually, kind of the swivel chair kind of thing, right? Going between different tools. But we kind of felt that it was really important that our customers have made an investment in product and that they really shouldn't have to, uh, to pay more. They should be entitled to the visibility the integration, the correlation, the automation that is available with SecureX. That's kind of why we put CTR out there and why SecureX uh, threat response is there now. Uh, you know, the, the ribbon and orbital integration, all these things that we do to try to make this as close to that panacea, as you said, Alex, of a single pane of glass, right? We at least want to give you that first cut where you can have reliable evidence to make decisions. And I think that's a, a truly, uh, truly important thing. And also, I think one of the reasons that the analysts give us such high marks on our integrations because of that intelligence behind how we put it together. So, yeah, it's, it's really, really good and refreshing to hear. Uh, that at least the beginning of that mission on the journey has succeeded so far. And of course, we can we'll continue to, to push that and get better and better over time. So um, and probably one other one yeah. other thing I didn't mention, Mike, is um, the what you know, reporting and, and metrics is is a really important function in cybersecurity. You, you need to you need to show value in the investments that you're making. Um, and I know previously I was pulling reports from all the different products, all the different Cisco products, and they all look and behave a little bit differently. Yep. You've got to pull all that together and try and create a, a, a standard and constant picture. What what SecureX has, has brought is it's actually doing that for us now. It's, it's bringing all the analytics from all the different consoles into one standardized picture. And that's, um, that's certainly made our lives easier. Yeah, you know, I, I hear that a lot, and I think it's a testament to the many, many, many years of security operations experience behind the folks that put the integrations together, right? Because it's not just about having data. It's about having useful data, data that makes sense, data that's meaningful, um, and data that really, you know, gives uh, an operator or an analyst the information that they need to make good decisions for action, right? That's huge. And then reporting uh, is kind of a direct, uh, a direct benefit of that, right? Because we're, it's the data that's being collected and summarized that's actually being presented to you. So those data sets can be very consistent uh, and very meaningful uh, on the output. So good to hear. Now, just to piggyback on, 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 on that statement there real quick, you know, we always look at our tools as, as, as augmenters to the, the human faces, right? So it gives us a, uh, another set of hands instead of having to teach my analyst how to look at logs from each one of these different tools, I am getting another set of hands that actually goes and pulls all of that stuff, makes sense out of it and displays it to my analyst. And the analyst is very good at using his brain power to understand what is being provided. Instead of trying to bring it all together and trying to figure out where everything is. This actually provides you with that second set of hands that, that, that queries everything that we are looking for and bring it all under one spot and kind of show that flow of where that incident happened or where that event happened. So definitely a value add tool. Yeah, I, I would agree. I know my, my own personal use of, of uh, SecureX uh, in my operational environment, I see you know one, a benefit of that that is, is really important. And that is when there's a new threat or some new activity, um, you know, without something that can truly bring it together into one, into one area, and pull all the IOCs together and pull all the, the valuable data together and present it for your analyst, you actually have to spend a, a great deal of time kind of understanding what that threat is. What are all the vectors? What does it touch? Uh, you know, how does it operate? How does it flow? And to see that kind of thing being automated without any additional configuration inside of SecureX, I've heard over and over and over again how much time that saves the analyst to have it all presented to you as the threat 
because we don't then have to go and